All right, let's get going. Happy ECB day. Your bull yield is currently down by one of the basis points, middle part of the zero spot, four six percent area. And again, ECB on the rate policy expected to keep it unchanged across the board. The main refi rate expected to be held at zero spot zero zero percent. The deposit facility expected to remain at negative zero spot four zero percent, and the lending facility expected to be held at zero spot two five percent. The focus will be in likely hey, the ECB QE bond buying. It's currently at 60 billion euros per month. The program that runs to the end of this year is expected to be extended into 2018. The question is for. Thank you, Trade the News. We appreciate you. Hey, good morning, everybody. Let me remind you that trading is risky, not appropriate for everyone. The past performance, good or bad, is not necessarily indicative of the future results. Today, small, stay humble, focus on the long term, and never risk money. Cannot afford to lose. I think I just broke my desk. Hello, my name is Wayne. I'm the Chief FX Market Strategist for TradersWay.com. Thank you so much for being a client. Throw your, throw your diamonds in the sky. Traders Way. So anyways, hey, today is ECB Day. I'm here to be your guide and your interpreter. We'll do these sessions 7.30 in the morning, Monday through Friday here at Forex.today. You show your loyalty and respect if you uh, appreciate these webinars I do every single day that I've been doing for 13 years. Um, you show that loyalty and respect and courtesy by opening up an account at tradersway.com. We have an ECB announcement in uh, about six and a half minutes approximately, 6.18 minutes, just roughly. and. Uh, and then we have to wait 45 minutes for a press conference. Why? Why? I mean, seriously, why don't why don't they just announce it at the press conference? That's. I guess they need time to smoke cigarettes and drink wine. <clears throat> Go on strike. It's the European way. Three months of vacation per year plus two weeks uh, at least for striking. So anyways, we got to go do that. Thank you for being here. This is the oil trade. We talked about, uh, I think it was oil, wasn't it? Well, sorry, peso. <clears throat> That's peso from yesterday. <laughs> sorry. <sighs> Where's our euro? Do we have euro on here? Sweet. So I'm going to turn on tradethenews.com. Who? Tradethenews.com. They're going to provide us uh, real-time analysis and feedback on the announcement, which is going to be what? No interest rate change, uh, but they're going to announce a taper. Um, so, yeah, on uh, QE. So let me go back to that, and then we'll wait for the press conference. We'll do the press conference live together if you want. Hope you're excited. <laughs> Maybe get some OCO scalping, huh? Let's turn that on. Oh, I already got it going. 
do some scalping just in case you never know okay I got my scalping hat on just for fun about 3.82 minutes hey Daniel do you think you'll have that thing on Monday I'm praying. <laughs> we'll see. I should know today or tomorrow if it's even going to be a thing. Bloody government. Sometimes are these big and the rate decision sometimes is a few moments delayed and the focus will be on the QE program if there is a statement and focus on the amount and for how long the program will be Maybe we'll go for soup next week, though, Daniel. With the great decision, they have so in the past on such announcements. Draghi's press conference will be about 45 minutes after the rate decision. We'll lead off with the main refi rate again, expect to be held steady at zero percent. Then we'll look for the QE statement, if any. The euro fraction softer hold above the 118 handle 118 or I don't like the soft euro. I like a nice and firm. The euro firmer there by against the British currency by a quarter percent, and the 10-year bond yield is currently down over one and a half basis points, 0 0.463 percent. Bond futures are currently trading 120, 27. About a minute away, and again, historically, it could be delayed by as much as 30 seconds for the decision. It's only Europe. We don't care. <clears throat> Watch the pivots. Watch the resistance lines. Look how tight the pivots are, inside weak and everything. Yeah, let's all uh, meet up in Singapore next week. You guys want to go to raffles? Have a Singapore sling? Hang out at Daniel's house? <laughs> everybody, come on, everybody in! There's more room. Rate decision any time now. Still waiting to see B. All right, they took policy action. ECB taking policy action, waiting for the details. Unchanged for the rates across the board there. Wait. <laughs> From January 2018, the asset purchases, so they're making a change. From January, they'll go until the end of September, so a nine-month extension, $30 billion. So in line with the expectation, $30 billion until September. Extended program by nine months and cut the program in half to $30 billion. So amending that QE bond buying program in line with the expectations. The euro just fractionally softer. Just below. Oh, my God, just like everybody thought. That's, that's, that's amazing! Wow! Jay Wiz! Alright, they are cutting, y'all. Yeah. They're going to wait because they want to have the market do whatever it wants to do. Now this is heading down, so... Here's the funny thing. The market's disappointed. Because a taper should make the euro strong. So I'm not sure what the market wanted. Maybe it's dumb money, huh? All right, fine. What do you want to do? Are you going to scalp it? 
What do you want? To, what do you want me to do? Tell me. Tell me what to do. <coughs> tell me what to do, huh? Come on, let's go. Too slow. Come on, guys. What do you want me to do? Yeah, it's already too late. It's already too late. I, I asked three times. Everybody's, I guess you're trading, so not your fault. All right, so Elias is going to ignore all the rules of engagement. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> All right, that's cool. So the high volatility, yeah. Yeah, okay. High volatility event driven strategy is now done and complete. It's moved 10 pips. No, that's all right, Robert. I figured as much. So remember the the awesomeness of trading is you can let you can let it break and catch the next move later, which is fine. Which is fine. Just there's always something to do. There, there's so many new traders that are so worried that they're missing it. I'm missing it, I'm missing it, I'm missing it. By the way, you missed it. I think I was begging you to give me an answer in the eighties. Now we're in the sixties, so I would have made my twenty five pips by now. The hell you got? What's so slow? Come on, guys, so slow. Anyways, um, uh, what was I gonna say? Uh, I've lost my train of thought. I think I broke my desk. Uh, uh yeah. So, anyways, this, I, don't, I don't know what we're talking about anymore. So we lost the scalp. That's fine. Oh, yeah, the other opportunity. Yeah, you're right. There's always something else to do. You, you never miss it, right? So when you, when, you, uh, when you start missing things, you're like, oh, my gosh, I missed it. You know you're pretty close to running yourself into, into trouble. So we certainly would have hit the 25 pip profit on the scalp by now. I was hoping that I would have had a whole bunch of yeses. Yes, it is. But uh, missed the scalp opportunity, guys. You missed it. It would have been right below the weekly central as well. Or right above, or wasn't it? What did I do? The first one, the second one? Oh, yeah. So we're just, yeah. So whatever. So the high volatility event driven strategy part's gone. Robert's got the 30. Cool. Does anyone have questions? Are there any new people about the the general high high volatility event driven strategy? <clears throat> I think for many people that's why you're here. You, that's where you ran into me. So I figure everybody knows. But if you don't, you should ask. Rin, beautiful name. Yeah, that's true enough, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. I'll cover it, Rin. Uh, question, man or woman, male or female? I'm not familiar with the name Rin, but male, cool. That's a neat name. Where's, what culture is that from? Texas, <laughs> the Texas culture. Yeah, <laughs> is it like Welsh or something? Or yeah, no, it's cool. I'm not laughing. I'm telling you. 
Yeah, it, it's a very similar name to what uh, to the my children's name. That's all. Yeah, no, yeah. So, it, but you do you pronounce it Ryan or Rin? It's a cool name. I'm not bugging you. Really? <laughs> is it Ryan, like a R Y N? Ryan, or is it Rin? R I N N? And then I'll, then I'll cover it. I'm just curious. Rin, that's cool, man. That's neat. All right, cool. Anyways, uh, cool. Yeah, okay, the high volatility event driven strategy. It's, uh, by the way, I, I put it in my book, and I'll shameless plug, but I don't know. It's eight years old, so. Um, anyways, the high volatility event driven strategy is that you look for pullbacks. So we have red. As soon as the news comes out, what that tells us instantly is you cannot buy. Okay, you just cannot buy. That's it. Done. Because it's just a scalp. We're not making fundamental uh, decisions here. We're not making long-term decisions. It's simply the market's instant reaction to new information. That's why it's a scalp. It's not really directional for any other reason except the volatility is taking us that direction. So it's an event-driven, a.k.a. news, high volatility, right, event-driven strategy. So news comes out, red candles, rules of engagement under these market conditions with this particular methodology, if you will, is you can only go in the direction of the instant response. Now, sometimes you can get caught in counter trends and stuff. It's not that common, but if you're on a massive, massive level, it can happen. But we, we try not to account for that in these rules of engagement. If it's red, we're red. Great. The next thing that we're looking for is a bounce at some sort of support and resistance, some sort of pullback for you to enter. So if it's red, you need to, right, you need to, you need to enter on a pullback. Down, 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 up, up. I think it came back to about 50%. So your sell in the first minute would be right in here off of this sort of roll reversal area. And this happens fast, like seconds. It goes, boom, boom, <laughs> sell, okay? And your stop would be placed uh, somewhere here. Now, as you may have seen right before the news, I threw on a, a, a 2525 OCO EA. So it just does 25 limit, 25 stop automatically. And then I can adjust manually after, so I don't have to waste time, okay? Anyways, and then it fell further, a second minute, right? In fact, probably we're only 90 seconds into this trade now. And it was way down here, and then it pulled back into this area, more of a 3A2. And it was also monkeying around with the weekly central pivot. And this is where I'm like, guys, so what do you want me to do? Are we going to take this? Are we going to take this? Are we going to trade it? Or are we going to take this? I don't know, and no response. <laughs> and, and 10 or 15 seconds goes by, I'm like, boom, you lost it, you missed it, it's gone. It's gone, it's a scalp, right? So this is one of the th reasons I say right before NFP, is that there's no time for a group, uh, group hug or a committee meeting, right? There's about 100 of us here, and we missed it because, you know, I don't know, five, five seconds is too slow, right? So anyways, Somewhere in here would be the next short. And then after that, it's just kind of done because it's already done all this, right? So you can imagine the second area you would have sold in here, but your stop would still be the same. Well, it should still be above here. So what are we talking about? Uh, um, you, you could be short about 90 or you could be short, yeah, at 118.000 as resistance after we broke through, pulled back to 118. Yeah, of course. So either short at zero, zero, or you're short at 90. I mean, who cares, right? Well, the interesting part to, of carrying is the 25 pips, right? So, so because I threw on a 25, 25 OCO, right? So I think I do it this way, don't I? 
17, uh, am I doing this right? No, 34, I see it now. No, is it? Yeah, that's 20, that's 25, right? Oh, nice. So it's about here. There we go. Oh, that's better. Okay, that's 25 pips, right? The difference is if you were to scalp here, the pullback, remember the initial down, 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 up, up, use the roll reversal psychological level. Oh, yeah, there's no doubt. You would have had your 25 pips by now. Profit in the bank. But you notice it hit that and pulled back. Why do you think it hit that and pulled back? Because somebody else had the same strategy. I've taught thousands of people, I guess. I don't know. But it hit that 25 pips and then retraced again. Where did it retrace to? This one. Right? And that one hit. You see? And it's now double bottoming around this area. Cool, right? So, you... If you really got your eyes on the prize, you see how you could have pulled 50 pips out of that move? Just using the stuff I put in a book that I wrote 10 years ago? It's not so bad. You're not going to get filthy, stinking rich on scalping, but there are times when, it, when you do it. Let's try this. If you had sold at the weekly central, right? Let me zoom back in. Do you think this is a coincidence? If you had sold right at 117.86. Now, why, why is it not perfect? Yeah, you don't have to, Stefan, at all. Absolutely, right? I absolutely don't need to. It's just, like I said, just categorize it. It's a high volatility event driven strategy. Just like I like, there's a weekly swing strategy. Great. There's a monthly swing strategy. Great. It's just a thing. Now, why is it not perfect if someone sold at or like one pit below? Thank you, Chuck. Exactly right. You got to catch the spread because you're short. So you got to go a little under for the bid ask to hit the actual enter or entry, right? So the cool thing is, you know, when I was screaming, Are you, should we take it? Should we take it? What should I do? Should we take it? And no one responded. You know that many market participants did, and it went down here, covered their spread and went up, which means they did the 25-25 OCO, predetermined in their trade plan. Cool, right? Now, typically, you would have an opportunity to do the whole thing again on the five-minute chart. So now you're done, right? So let me go back. And I can't even get this. I'm going to have to go back to a one-minute. Now I think you should measure it this way and do the same thing again on a five minute chart because those those slow boys are still going to want to do the trade not to mean to do that but let's just call it this oh man <laughs> so difficult. all right oh oh even the five minute boys are going to miss it oh snap so what I was setting up was a bigger retracement uh, on the five minute chart. And I guess it's going to look for better support. All right, so maybe hit this first and then pull back. So what would that be? I got really got to adjust this pivot, this fib, I mean. So it hits that first and then pulls back. That makes it... Uh, Almost a 618, huh? Because uh, I'm predicting a bounce there. Let's do it this way. A bounce there. And that. Now, then we have to ask ourselves, is this big enough support to pull it all the way back around? 
and get a uh, counter trend. How do you feel about this support? Well, I got it marked here. Is it big enough to, to bring it all the way back up to this area? What do you guys think? Robert says, what price do you use as your pay? Well, it'd be the entry. So what I would like to see, okay, and I guess I should just draw this because that's too hard to do, the empty four tools, is something like this. Okay? For the rest of the week or something. And then it's entirely possible next week we do that or that. But that's for next week to figure out, right? Okay, so uh, I'm going to treat this as like mid-level support, which is less interesting to me. Okay. You notice that this is a, an interesting level. A 1618 onto an S pivot. That could be interesting too. Yes, Rin, anything for someone from Texas. I wasn't going to do it, Rin, but because you asked, I will. Yeah. Oh, I see what you mean. Can you do the trade? All right. I mean, too facetious. I know you're like this guy. All right. I'll, I'll calm it down. Can you do this? Well, it's not quite the same as a news release. Okay. This is a high volatility event driven strategy. It's event driven. So we knew the 745 announcement was to be made. In this case with the ECB conference, we don't know what information is going to come out. We don't know how important it is, so on and so forth. And we specifically don't know when. So you can get these like, eh, 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 responses right because he could say one thing and then backtrack you see what I mean he say oh yeah so we're gonna taper oh but and then you know so we get the taper move and then it pulls back because he says but we blah 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 and you can get all kinds of mixed messages and mixed signals and unclarity and misunderstandings it's a little different than saying you know NFP, it's uh, 282,000. Oh, boom! Right? And riddles, sure. Right? Does that make sense, Ren? So it, it's not quite the same thing. We will get the, we will likely get some sort of volatility and maybe some move. It would be a slightly different strategy. So, like, if they did say something that made the euro really, really weak. Which I find it strange. They should be th saying things that make it strong. I mean, it kills their inflation move, but um, uh, I mean, they can't really do anything about that now. Uh, you know, there's a, a sort of a, a different methodology. So, like, I might drop 10 25-25 OCOs if it was going, like, up, up, up. And I just drop it, add one, right? And then, and then it comes out, drop another one, here drop another one and be very careful on how I do it in the sense where I might give myself the permission to lose a hundred pips, which means I could throw down a 25, 25 OCO, feel comfortable. It starts moving up, makes a little hesitation. I can throw down another one feeling comfortable that if it all collapses, I only lose 50 pips and that's fine. Right. But my goal would be to 
just have it elevate, 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 and I just keep adding another one, another one, another one, and, and all of a sudden, my first ones are getting taken off, and the new ones are added on, you know, and, you, and kind of like say, I'm going to lose 100 pips scalping, or I'm going to make 250 pips scalping. Whatever hits first. Or I run out of volatility. But usually you find that after you've entered a bunch of trades. And all of a sudden it goes sideways. You're like, oh! Okay. Yeah. I don't tend to do that much on this account. This is, you know, my coaching account and stuff. But um, a few people have seen it. And then all of a sudden I was getting a lot of questions. I'm like, mm, it's not really the... It's been distracting, so I don't do that. But there are times where I'm like, people are like, you know, you got 15 trades on that news event. I'm like, yeah. And all of a sudden I get 900 questions about it. I'm like, well, you know, make your decisions and trade, trade your trade. All right. So anyways, it seems like we're quieting down, huh? Yeah, all right, so it's messing around here. This is uh, a little surprised how bearish it is. Dollar strong there. Uh, mm, just kind of looking around to see how other markets are taking it. Life is great. Life is grand. Ooh, we're in my buy zone. Or as they say in Louisiana, the bayou. You buy? The bayou. The bison. The bison, as they say in Italy. That's interesting, huh? Mm. I mean, think of it. If you're a bull, I'm not saying you should be a bull, but if you were a bull, what, were you, what would be better than that? A double bottom on an M2. You're like, yeah, well, I'd like something better. Well, what would be, what would, what, yeah, what would be better than a double bottom on M2? Like, just that, that you were supposed to buy here early in the month. And you're like, Wayne, but it only went from 87.50 to 89. Like, yeah, I know it's not a lot of pips, but it's still what you're supposed to do. Look at how it, midpoint psych level and everything. Isn't that just sick? Isn't that just sick? How could you not be in this if you're a bull, huh? So this is going to be the next challenge for show. So I, I, I'm going to guess that it's going to come up to about here. It's going to hit that and pull back. And... Uh, Roll reversal, maybe, or quadru triple bottom on this time frame. <clears throat> what do you think? You can do things like this, right? Pachow! What? You know what I'm talking about? Snap. So Adam already took it, huh? Oh, you, you set that up. Oh, you already did that. Cool. Very nice. Life is beautiful, oh, gonna get what you got, gonna get what you get. Ba, 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 la, 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 ba, 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 ba. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. 
Uh, here we go. Here we go. So we got the setup. I'm going to have to adjust, unfortunately. And it makes it a 618. So I guess we're okay. I guess we're, it turns out, I guess it has some sort of meaning if it does that. So uh, 618, fine. If the 618 is the retracement, what's the extension? <clears throat> 1382, thank you, Ryan. And that gets us to WS1. One, two, you rock. Okay, so that that be that. So now I guess we twiddle our thumbs. What is it? Fifteen more minutes. You guys want to join my clan? We can do, huh? We can do some battles. How about the Knicks? You don't clash? Robert, Robert, Robert doesn't clash. Now, oh, you do Royal? No, I'm a, I'm old school man. I'm still COC. <laughs> Bachelor in space. Yeah, dude. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm sorry. So I will fix that though. My my bad. It's been a it's a been a very strange week. Um, oh, so let's go back to this. This is funny, right? How we were talking about if you were a bear, you would sell here. If you were a bull, you would buy here. <laughs> it's funny though, isn't it? It just proves that nobody <clears throat> that the market hasn't made a decision, but. It's kind of funny, right? On Monday, I'm like, dude, that's it. If you're a bear, that's where you sell. There's nothing more to it. And then down here, even though it's fallen, right? Even though it's fallen straight down, 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 down. I come out here, I'm like, well, if you're a bull, you'd buy it here and here, right? So this whole zone, you can see it's all grayed out. This whole zone is where you'd buy it. That's just by definition, that's where the bulls are. And look at that, boom! And then we're back down, boom! And we're just back to where we were. But it shows you that it's logical that you should be able to know where the bulls will buy and where the bears will sell. What do you do if you don't know that? Yeah, you lose money, I guess. So we got to remedy that, right? <clears throat> So, learn it, yeah. Well, it's hard to figure all this stuff out on your own. Okay, this is whipping out. We're at 1750. We were at 18, so that was a 50 pip move. Um, so, I guess one, you could have made 50 pips on one, and 25 pips on the second, so 75. We're taking two 25, 25 OCOs for a total of 50. We're taking the one and just sat on it for 50. But we definitely went from 118 Well, you know, either they thought the taper would be sooner or they thought it would be greater. 
you know, would be two thoughts right off the bat, Alex. Yeah, Robert says uh, history was uh, 94. That's fine. To me, it's the same thing. Guess we got to do some oil while we wait. Hey, we're just under 15 minutes. We'll see the start of the ECB press conference. And as expected, they kept their interest rates unchanged across the board, but they did amend their QE bond buying program. It was in line with the expectations of it being cut in half to $30 billion per month, extended until September of, May, of next year, so a nine-month extension, all in line with expectations. The ECB did note that the interest rates will remain at present level well beyond the end of QE. We've seen the euro initially sell off. Uh, the ECB not making any mention of a potential first rate hike. The dollar gaining further traction on reports that Fed, current Fed Chair Yellen is out of contention for the reappointment in the position. Ah. So for Spain, the constitutional... She's kicked out yelling and screaming, huh? That's interesting. So, John Taylor, you think? Yeah, so, you know, using the trade the news guy, what he was saying was um, they, the ECB stated that the taper is going to, uh, they're going to extend QE another nine months, but at half the rate. That's fine. Nine months, I, I, thought, I thought it was, September seems like that's pretty far out, so... Um, I'm a little surprised by that, but he said that's what the market expected. Okay, fine. But then they said interest rates will not be raised for well after that. Okay. Well, it's in their communication, yeah, but... Uh, you know, I, I, the market, I suppose, would, would hold out, right? Would hold out for the hope, I suppose. So now there'd be no hope. It's still, that, it seems to be like we're reading a lot into that. Right. And then, you know, I, and, and again, in a, a typical sort of news thing, the dollar's strong because Yellen is out of contention. Well, why would that strengthen the dollar? Like, oh, now everyone should, you know, now invest? Um, you know, it's, it's funny. I don't know. It's all funny. It's all funny. Oh, I was holding off, but no. No, I'm going to buy the dollar. I don't believe that's true at all. So let's uh, let's talk some oil. So we had uh, Saudi Arabia saying that, of course, we're going to cut. Okay. Okay. So, not a huge move, but it's supporting my bias. Would you agree with that? The Saudis saying, of course, we're going to cut, so, right? And Russia saying, yeah, we'll support something like that. Doesn't hurt my position, right? So here we be. 
And uh, I'll just put the target there. I guess we're missing some, missing one. Let's do it like that. There you go. Ba, 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 da, da, da. So we're just uh, waiting. Wasn't enough for a break. It does. It sounds like they will actually cut them. Yeah, well, that's almost irrelevant <laughs> whether they do or not. Um, but it, they're not hurting my general bias with with the the chatter, right? If there was some hoeing and humming, then I would really need to consider adjusting my bias based on the new information. But none of that's new. It's all supportive to my position. So, cool, great. Right, just it doesn't build confidence, but it doesn't build um, doubt. Right, it doesn't start to chip away at the confidence. So I'm like, yeah, fine, we're all good. Remember, this this move started at 45, and we're at 52. Well, it started at 46. I thought it would start at 45. Anyway, so our move is here. We had a pullback. We didn't freak out. I set it all up on the roll reversal, use the channel to outline the break, so then you could catch the pullback and be long again at 50-50, and now we're at 52-50, and, you know, two bucks is two bucks, it's a couple of grand. And uh, hopefully we get a pop and not a drop. And right now, nothing suggests a drop. It doesn't create a pop because it's not new information, but... We'll hurry up and wait. What to do? What to do? We've looked at the Kiwi a couple of times, so we can... Go check that out. You are not alone. 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 That sucks, huh? What a complete collapse. Oh, well, so the bottom is projected to be between 77 and a half and 76. Yikes, huh? Yeah, the elections were uh, terrible. It's too bad. There was, I had a lot of hope for it, um, even last year. You know, one of the things we were watching was uh, Kiwi Swissy for the double dip on the uh, on the interest. Is it here? Pound Swissy, Kiwi Swissy, <laughs> and uh, yeah, still, still, no, so good. Maybe uh, take a look at it at uh, six. 68, 67, 68. Pretty close to that now, aren't we? It's already consolidating. That's kind of interesting. The next level's down here at 67, I guess. 67 is probably the number. We're pretty close to the target. Look at this I drew on Monday. Oh, snap. That's not too bad, right? Oh, what? 
Who drew that for you? Oh, gee whiz, Batman. Okay, I am going to flip over so you can rub my belly. Oh, no, that's not what I meant. All right. We have two minutes and 36 seconds. Yeah, you know, even uh, even the Romans, if you think about it, you know, biblical times, Roman soldiers sitting there swatting flies with their zebra tails. And I had been in control for hundreds of years, and that's how it always has been and always shall be. <laughs> like, you know. Yeah, but you know, at the time, you were, you know, you were, if you were a young man, you're like, well, the Roman soldiers, the Romans control everything. That's just how it always has been and always will be, and there's nothing I can do about it. Right? <laughs> That's a funny thing. We live so short lives that, you know, there's nothing we can do about it. And yet there's always somebody that does something about it, and we'll just build a statue out of them. That's what we'll do. We'll build a statue. <clears throat> and like, that's a lot like the golden ox. No, 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 no. This is different. Thank you, Robert. Catalonia, where is that? Is that in Texas? All right. There's so many Americans that are scratching their head. They're like, I don't know what Catalonia is. Why, why would I care? Seriously, walk down the, the street in any major town in America and ask them their thoughts about Catalonian independence. <laughs> like, Prior vibes, a little higher, advanced good trade balance, in line at minus 64.1 billion dollars. Wholesale inventories here point three percent for September is one tenth lower than expected. Retail inventories at minus one point zero percent versus plus zero point seven percent prior. WWE reporting 186 million in revenue, hitting the 173 million consensus expectation, raising outlook and whiskey whiskey echo. So why do we care about uh, trade balance? How about gold? Probably not that important today, but it's a big, well, it's actually, it is part of GDP. Yeah. Right? Government spending, consumer spending, business spending, exports minus imports equals GDP.
Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. My pleasure. Anything for you, Mario. Oh. Are you beginning the press conference? Ladies and gentlemen, Vice President and I are very pleased to welcome you to our press conference. We will now report on the outcome of today's meeting of the Governing Council, which was also attended by the Commission Vice President, Mr. Dombrowski. Based on our regular... I think he said Mr. Dombrowski. <coughs> today we conducted a thorough assessment of the outlook for inflation, the risks surrounding this outlook, and our monetary policy stance. As a result, the Governing Council took the following decisions in pursuit of its price stability objective. First, the key ECB interest rates were kept unchanged, and we continue to expect them. What does he use a teleprompter? At present levels for an exciting. You know that they have conducted a full assessment of the inflation and outlook. Past the horizon of our net asset purchases. Second, as regards non-standard monetary policy measures, we will continue to make purchases under the asset purchase program. Okay, you reiterated that rates are seen at the present level well past the end of QE. Euro until the end of December 2017. From January 2018, our net asset purchases are intended to continue at the monthly pace. Was it going to have three trillion euro worth of bonds? The end of September 2018, or beyond, if necessary, and in any case, until the governing council sees a sustained adjustment in the path of inflation consistent with its inflation aim. If the outlook becomes less favorable or if financial conditions become inconsistent. Yeah, Draghi, you've already this new QE that they'll buy the bonds at least through September. Inflation, we stand ready to increase the APP, the Asset Purchase Program, in terms of size and or duration. Third, the Euro system will reinvest the principal payments from maturing securities purchased under the asset purchase program so for you're ready, ready, extended the period of the time after the end as well of its net for extended asset period after QE ends and in any case for as long as necessary. This will contribute both to favorable liquidity conditions and to an appropriate monetary policy stance. And fourth, we also decided to continue to conduct the main refinancing operations and three month longer term refinancing operations as fixed rate tender. I just know that they extended the full allotment through the end of 2019. And at least until the end of the last reserve maintenance period of 2019. Today's monetary policy decisions were taken Draghi is reiterating that a very substantial degree of accommodation is still needed that are still needed for a sustained return of inflation rates towards levels that are below but close to 2%. The recalibration of our asset purchases reflects growing confidence in the gradual convergence. It's still basically at 1750. Towards our inflation aim. Remember the first short was at 18. Of the increase of robust. We're at 117.50. Economic expansion. An uptick in measures of underlying inflation. Draghi just rendered these seas of uptick in the measures of underlying inflation. And all these in line with the initial statement. The financing conditions of the real economy. At the same time. Domestic price pressures are still muted overall, and the economic outlook and the path of inflation 
remain conditional on continued support from monetary policy. Therefore, an ample... Let's see how you can hold near their post statement high while the euro holding the post statement low 117.43 continue to build up this this highlights Rin's question about can you scalp it like a high volatility event driven strategy and generally not is the answer continue it's not quite the same is provided by the additional net asset purchases by the sizable stock of acquired assets and the forthcoming reinvestments and by our forward guidance on interest rates. Let me now explain our assessment in greater detail, starting with the economic analysis. Are you reiterating that this is solid and broad-based expansion? continues to be solid and broad-based. Real GDP increased by 0.7% quarter on quarter. In the second quarter of 2017, after 0.6% in the first quarter. I think we're going to have to highlight this as something. A follow up on Spain, and it will appear in the Catalan Parliament, 3.30 local time. That'll be 9.30 Eastern time, just under an hour's time. So he'll appear in the local Parliament in just under an hour. ...leveraging process and continue to support domestic demand. Well, Robert, it's basically good because we knew Private everything. Consumption if nothing is new. By rising employment, which is also benefiting from past labor market reforms and by increasing household wealth. The upswing in business investment continues to benefit from very... But the taper should be pro-euro. ...and improvements in corporate profitability. Construction investment has also strengthened. In addition, the broad-based global recovery is supporting euro area exports. Risks surrounding the euro area growth outlook remain broadly balanced. On the one hand, strong cyclical momentum, as evidenced in recent developments in sentiment indicators, could lead to further positive growth surprises. On the other hand, downside risks continue to relate primarily to global factors and developments in foreign exchange markets. Euro area annual HICP inflation remained unchanged at 1.5% in September. Looking ahead, on the basis of the future that the risks to the growth outlook are balanced, the rates of inflation lower towards the end of the year, to can see by Draghi, we'll see Bundesbank officials also reflect this. The turn of the year, mainly reflecting base effects in energy prices. At the same time, measures of underlying inflation have ticked up moderately since early 2017, but have yet to show more convincing Access interest in this TA-10, registering senior notes, single X-ray November. Wage growth has increased somewhat, but domestic, pre domestic cost pressures still remain subdued overall. Underlying inflation in the euro area is expected to continue to rise gradually over the medium term, supported by our monetary policy measures, the continued economic expansion, the corresponding gradual absorption of economic slack, and rising wage growth. Turning to the monetary analysis, broad money M3 continue to expand at robust pace with an annual rate of growth of 5.1% in September 2017. Just know we're nearly earlier speculation on the Fed chair, White House official comment that Trump Trump has yet to make a final decision on who to nominate. Was Follow up there, we did your early reports that Yellen was out of contention. With a narrow monetary aggregate M1 expanding at an annual rate of 9.7% in September 17 
2017, up from 9.5% in August. The recovery in the growth of loans to the private sector observed since the beginning of 2014 is proceeding. The annual growth rate of loans to non-financial corporations increased to 2.5% in September 2017 after 2.4% in August, while the annual growth rate of loans to households remained stable at 2.7 percent. The Euro Area Bank Lending Survey for the third quarter of 2017 indicates that net loan demand has continued to increase for all loan categories. Credit standards have further eased for loans to households, while they remain broadly unchanged for loans to enterprises. Banks' overall terms and conditions on new loans have continued to ease for all categories of loans. The pass-through of the monetary policy measures put in place since June 2014 lots of continues to significantly support borrowing conditions for firms and households, access to financing, notably for small and medium-sized enterprises, and credit flows across the euro area. To sum up, a cross-check of the outcome of the economic analysis with the signals coming from the monetary analysis confirm the need to recalibrate the policy instruments to ensure the degree of monetary accommodation necessary to secure a sustained return of inflation rates towards levels that are below but close to 2%. In order to rip the full benefits from Draghi, reiterating that measures, other actors must contribute decisively against stressing the need for structural reforms, strengthening the need to be speak here in the press conference, and reducing the overall language. The implementation of structural reforms in all Euro countries needs to be substantially stepped up to increase resilience reduce structural unemployment, and boost euro area productivity and growth potential. Regarding fiscal policies, all countries would benefit from intensifying the efforts towards achieving a more growth-friendly composition of public finances. A full transparent and consistent implementation of the Stability and Growth Pact and of the macroeconomic imbalance procedure over time and across Check this countries out. remains essential to increase the resilience of the euro area economy. Strengthening economic and monetary... This is from like five years ago. Priority. The Governing Council welcomes the ongoing discussions on further enhanced the institutional architecture. Completing his prepared remarks, he was moving on to Q and A portion of the press conference. Now at your disposal for questions. Here comes the drums. Francesco Canepa, Reuters. The first question is about. The composition. Did you discuss at the Governing Council meeting the composition of the APP starting from January? So the proportions of the different components. The, the second question is about the alternative scenarios. What alternative scenarios did you discuss apart from the one that finally That's right, cut? right there. Right there, Robert. Thank you. Um, no, we didn't discuss composition. Uh, there will be a press release, press communique at 3 Draghi noting that they did not uh, discuss the composition more of QE from January. Developing transparency and detailing more about the how the uh, asset purchase program will evolve in 2017, but we didn't discuss really the composition. The, um, the only thing that I can say about that is that... Uh, uh, Rossi! By issue details on QE after the last couple of bonds in the program and uh, and then you get uh, you get the rest yeah the uh, well I can anticipate some of the things you're going to see in uh, shortly uh, so 
as of January 2018, Eurosystem will publish exactly the month redemption amounts for each component of the APP for the Eurosystem as a whole for the following rolling 12 month period. So the Eurosystem, as you know, conducts the reinvestments in a flexible and timely manner in the month they fall due or in the subsequent two months if needed. Therefore, net purchases per jurisdiction may fluctuate owing to the timing of these reinvestments. Reinvestments will take place in the same jurisdiction as principal redemptions with the aim to minimize deviations from the capital key. So we'll, uh, you'll get a press release shortly after the press conference, but clearly uh, the, the press release will also... A little more than 10 minutes now, the open of pit trading in energy markets, WTI crude holding right on unchanged from yesterday, 52.20, natural gas futures down another 1% ahead of the weekly inventory data. All right, guys, so I'm going to have to leave you to it. Alternative QE scenarios. Alternative scenarios. The was, uh, um, there were, the, let me say this. The yeah. Uh, was, uh, uh, I got to go study the cruise line industry. The, all the, all the Metropolitan Council members in their interventions emphasized uh, the better conditions, the growth momentum, as I just said, unabated momentum unabated and the improving labor market whoa 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 really stressed how this number seven so million down there mari in the last four years is actually continues to increase the labor market the unemployment goes. yeah you know it was a uh, not much of a day but it, consumption and it was plausible that you uh remarkable because for a long time picked up somewhere between 25 and 50 pips on the standard uh, scalping methodology other than that, kind of a ho hum, ya yeah, ya yeah, ya. Yeah. Well, that's fine, I guess. I'm a little bummed out with October, to be honest with you, though. It can happen, it happens. Doesn't mean it's over, but you know, just whatever. Uh, I guess we're in a situation of, um, I wouldn't say complacency, but. I think we need like a disruptive moment where we need to force institutional investors into like Greek banks and stuff. Right. right? He's talking about the shape of the inflation recovery. He sees a B shape form or something, or uh, I don't know. Or whatever. It's our job to be here, analyze, and um, identify opportunities and manage risk. And uh, we can't control anything else. So, yeah, whatever. We can be disappointed, but you still have to, you know, sit down, shut up, and get ready for the next trade. So, uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Hopefully, it'll be a lot more interesting. Yeah, but thank you for being on my team because, uh, you know, you keep me focused. Keep me focused, I, and I appreciate that. But we should have just uh, smoked some gar cigars today or something, huh? <laughs> so. All right. Take care, guys. Tradersway.com.